Hey, so it's been a while since I posted anything. Um, as you can see, I'm uh, finished with this room. Slow around a little bit. You can see the panels are equidistant on the walls. You can't see any seams. I'm going to try to zoom here now, but... First time I tried this, well, it works, but anyway, very pleased with it. And um, still don't have any curtains up in the room. I'm using uh, some thumbtacks to uh, tack up curtains. Don't have a bed in here yet. I, I never did move this bed out of here, but uh, as you can see, it's just a frame. Put a new floor in. Vinyl. Home Depot. Uh, what is it? Life Proof. Backwoods. Um, something or other. Came out very nice. And so I deviated... Uh, you know, Home Depot sells this panel, obviously, the subject of this video. They also sell, um, which most of you are going to use, they also sell a uh, chair rail and baseboard that are fitted for this panel. I went in a different direction because my walls are 10 foot, actually 10 foot plus. Got a tray ceiling here. And uh, because, because the room is uh, big, and I've got another master bedroom just as big as this, by the way. So that's where we've been sleeping. But uh, because the, the room is fairly large uh, in height, I decided to max out on, on the potential for the uh, uh, wall height. Uh, regarding the, the panel height. And so I used six and a half inch baseboard right there, six and a half inch craftsman baseboard. And in another video, I, I, I'm pretty sure I detailed how I made this chair rail. But both of these um, features add height to the overall uh, wall uh, covering. So um, it doesn't, you know, look tiny on a 10 foot wall. Uh, I'll scan around a little bit more just to give you an idea of what the room looks like. The bathroom down on the far end, a couple of closets, all the trim work's done. Just don't have window treatments yet. And compared with, to what the room looked like before, it looks drastically different and much better. Uh, I think I mentioned, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, in one of the videos that when you're doing a window wall like this, you got a couple of windows or even one window. In order to get everything equidistant on the wall, you want to break the wall up. And the easiest way to break the wall up is with that. I, I still don't know what they call that architecturally, but I built it out with um, a couple of pieces of MDF sheet. That's what that is. Three, two, three quarter, two, three quarter inch pieces to make an inch and a half. And I brought it out from the wall and you can see trimmed around it. Uh, also size the window sill, the sill. And I put some banding on it. Banding's just one by something. What is that, like one by five or six around it and some trim to, to dress it up. But its whole purpose is to break the wall up under the window. Because if you take panel, like you can see part of, part of the panel right there, depending upon your wall size, of course, if you try to run uh, that wainscoting under the window, it will look terrible. You'll have partial 
panels. They won't be centered under the window and that kind of thing. And it just won't look right. So your best bet is to break the wall up into pieces. And that's what I did. So it came out really nice. So I'm going to uh, lay this to rest. We just put that up uh, about a month ago. That's a mini split. We had another one in here once before. That's a heat pump. Uh, that's a heat pump. The, the one before was a straight coal. I'm using it in the garage now. But looks good. Looks good. Happy to get done. Happy, happy to be finished with it. Uh, Time-wise, I began this, I think, on like June 24th. It is now August 12th. And so just today I finished uh, the baseboard. Now, I haven't been working eight hours a day on it either, but but because uh, we have another bedroom, but, you know, that's what it took me. So uh, everything really came out nice. No seams. You can't see any seams. I did have one screw up over here. And I'm you know, chastising, you know, another homeowner for putting his panels on upside down right there. I, did, I made that mistake by accident, put them upside down. And that's the only place in the room now where the panels are not equidistant between the space. And that was because I, when I flipped it over, the right side became the left side and the left side became the right side. And that's the result. But I'll have to live with that. Nobody really noticed it's in a hallway here, so. And uh, one other thing, let me get a better shot. This came out, came out pretty neat, so I'm going to highlight it if I can. These plinth blocks you see here, right here, that is made from PVC board. I bought at uh, Home Depot. Yeah, Home Depot. PVC board. It's, uh, oh, maybe Lowe's. I'm sorry. Maybe, yeah, I bought it at Lowe's. Uh, it's one by four, but it's an actual one inch. It's not three quarter inch. I couldn't use three quarters too thin. I wouldn't have been able to, but my, um, I wouldn't have been able to butt this up and have a nice, you know, line there. So I machined that out of uh, PVC board. And um, uh, I say machined, actually I, I cut seven and a half inch pieces on my miter saw. And then I ran them through a table saw to get that angle. It's angled. Uh, the angle follows the the existing um, molding, existing casing, and so it gives a nice line. I wish that, I wish I could say that was my idea, but actually I saw it online someplace. So that's one little tip there. And this this Craftsman six and a half inch baseboard. I was actually going to put a base cap on it, but I liked it just the way it was, or is, uh, so I left it, and I took the base cap back to Home Depot, saved myself a hundred bucks. I think it looks pretty good just the way it is. Okay, so I said I was going to end this about five minutes ago, so now I'm really going to end it. So before we begin, I uh, just want to say I'm not here to bash anyone. Uh, these are all DI wires and they make mistakes. Uh, some DI wires are better than others and I'm a DI wire myself, but uh, I do have experience uh, putting up wainscoting in uh, almost a professional manner. So let me continue on with this. By the way, when I refer to panel in this discussion, um, I used the wrong word. Uh, panel's not the right word. The panel panels we're using have three uh, rectangular decorations on them. When I say panel, I am referring to just one of the rectangular uh, 
uh, decorations one or two or three, but that's what I'm referring to, not the entire panel consisting of three. So I'm going to point out some things here that uh, are obvious uh, amateurish mistakes, and um, these are things you should avoid. Uh, that's my only purpose here is to give you some pointers. Um, you can look at my, my other uh, videos, um, some of which uh, you may have seen before, but I do have experience putting trim up. So even though I'm retired, uh, I do a pretty good job of it. So let's, let's get on with this right now. Let's look at this. What we have here on this wall are two panels okay, on the wall, one of which is an incomplete panel. The correct way to do that wall would be to center one panel on that wall. Here we have, uh, it's hard to see, another panel that's incomplete, butted into the, um, uh, the trim around the doorway there. Not good, doesn't look good. Here we have an obvious seam sticking out. Also not good. Kind of amateurish. Uh, Right here, the uh, installer installed them upside down. Not good. Here, they tried to wrap a panel around a corner. Never, never do that. That corner should have just a blank panel. The one uh, adjacent to the doorway should be a blank panel and the others should be um, equidistant on the wall. Again, the same thing here. The two panels adjacent to the door should be blank panels. If you cannot fit a panel on a, on a wall, in fact, the two on the um, right-hand side should be blank panels. And all the panels on the left-hand side should be equidistant. Uh, and the, uh, for, uh, the panel in the fore on the left-hand side that should be a blank panel also. So this is all screwed up here. So the next clip is out of order, but we're going to try to avoid um, uh, all those mistakes that uh, we just saw. We're going to um, have a set of rules to go by. Okay, so uh, one more thing to do, on, well actually two more things to do on this wall, but uh, I'm going to fill in this space now. Let's check it here. Twenty-four and three-quarter. Twenty-four and three-quarter. I already uh, on my computer, but uh, by hand I did it. Uh, I already figured that um, afraid we, we might get confused with terminology here, but from this point on out, I'm calling this a panel. Okay? I know this is paneling as a product, but we're going to call this a panel. And there are three panels per sheet. So a sheet is the 48 by 32 uh, inch product. So we're going to call this a panel. Otherwise we're going to get confused here. So I've already figured out that in this space I can only get one panel. One, one panel. And uh, Remember the rule, if you can't fit a full panel or full two panels or, you know, full three panels in a given space, leave it blank, okay? Or in the case of two panels, you put two panels and you center it within the space. In the case of one panel, you're going to center it in the space. If the space is too short to fit one panel, then you're going to put a blank panel in there, okay? So if the space is shorter than, than a full panel, if the width of the space you're trying to put it in is shorter than a full panel, 
you're going to leave it blank. You're going to put a blank piece of MDF in there, okay? You never want to cut a panel partially, half a panel or whatever, and, and you certainly don't ever want to cut the panel down the middle and then try to wrap it around a wall, uh, you know, like here. It, it, it will look terrible, so you don't ever want to cut a panel down this end and then try to wrap it around onto the other wall. Carpenters would never do that. At least I've never seen one do that and it just looks unrealistic and amateurish so don't do it. So again the rule is you, you take the given space and you figure out how many panels you can fit in to the given space. Full Example. Notice that this wall is 53 and a half inches wide. I can fit one sheet because the sheet is 48 and an eighth inch wide, but I need two blanks of 2.6875 on either side of it to fill the wall space and keep the sheet equidistant on the wall, uh, centered on the wall. Uh, so those are two blanks on the ends and one single sheet. That sort of illustrates the point. Um, we never want to put partial sheets on the wall panels. If it's only one, then just one. If it's one and a half, you default to one, okay? Uh, if it's even less than one, then you're going to put a blank piece of uh, quarter inch MDF in here. Those are the rules. So let's go cut some panels. So from this point forward, uh, we're just going to watch the videos as I did them. I'll comment where necessary. Morning. Um, I'm, as you can see, I'm doing a little uh, work on a wall here. And as the uh, video title says, these uh, are panels um, from Home Depot. And they're made to mimic uh, wainscoting. And um, uh, I decided to use them. This is just a bedroom. And I thought it was probably uh, okay for a bedroom. I started out um, with the idea that I was going to change the floor in here, either put down a wood floor or tile. And then I said to myself, you know what? The wall has the walls have no wall treatment, and uh, the windows in this room, the windows had no casings or trim around them. Uh, they didn't have a, a window sill other than a piece of, uh, I don't know, faux marble, I guess you could call it. Uh, they didn't have um, a wood sill. I just put that in myself. So anyway, I've been doing a little work here, and, and I'm no stranger to wainscoting. I've done wainscoting before. Uh, this is uh, a panel, okay, paneling. Yeah. So it's not not really wainscoting, but I started out looking at Home Depot and uh, I looked at all the customers' photos and they all said, oh, it's wonderful stuff and, you know, and they're, and they're uh, proud of the installation they did and for someone like me, and I don't want to sound too snobby, okay, I, you know, too pompous, but for someone like me, I started looking at the photos and, and things just stood out in the photos that uh, I would never find acceptable. Um, I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you the photos next. I don't want to piss off any homeowners and, and get any, you know, hate, hate comments in the comment section if, if they see these things, but learn from their mistakes, okay? They make a lot of mistakes. So what I'm going to try to do is get you off in the right direction, tell you how to install this stuff without um, uh, making the mistakes that they made. Uh, it's mostly all in the layout and uh, it's also um, good practice. I'm going to tell you what's good practice in terms of installing any kind of trim, uh, any kind of moldings, okay? Um, I'm not a professional, I'm a retired engineer, I'm a retired double E 
an electrical engineer, so you know what I've known, what I know, and what I do is what I learned in life. And some people are natural at some things, and and some things you're not a natural at. I'm a natural at this. Okay, I don't find this hard to do at all. It takes a little forethought, but uh, it all comes down to beginning. Uh, to lay it out, you got to have a plan. Whether you do it on pencil and paper, or you do it um, on a computer like I did in a computer program, you must lay this stuff out. Now, let me give you a little warning about this stuff. Um, it happens to be on on the Home Depot site. I believe they have the actual dimensions of the panels, but. It's been my experience. You have to be very careful when you buy anything from Home Depot or Lowe's or any place like that when they give dimensions, especially thicknesses and sometimes widths and heights because a lot of the stuff they're selling these days are metric and uh, they're dimensioned uh, they're, you know, uh, in inches when they sell it. All right? So they're, they're doing a little rounding off and they're not telling you so I checked these panels very carefully and uh, the panels I got and the bundle I got is 48 and an eighth inch, one eighth inch longer than this 48 and an eighth by I believe 32 and an eighth high. Uh, the height is not critical, okay, an eighth inch is not going to kill you, but the widths are critical because you're installing it on a wall and usually between two walls or between two windows as in this case but you need to know the exact width so always check it with a tape measure or or you know uh, whatever you have but verify uh, the width of the uh, paneling you're using so I don't want to ramble on this is the second time I've done this introduction uh, because the first one was way too long so this is what we're going to do, and as, as you can see, I'll be showing you how to install this stuff, but as you can see, because I'm redoing the uh, intro, um, I've already installed some panels. And I'll give you a little hint as to what, um, uh, what, I, what I saw in terms of the photos on Home Depot. Uh, for, you know, they, they all looked amateurish to me. They had varying mistakes in installation. And one of the biggest mistakes was the seams were showing. Now, right now, there's a, uh, the panels. The 48-inch panel comes with uh, uh, three design elements, okay? And so there's, there's a panel in the middle here, and then there's a cut panel on either end. And uh, I'm going to show you how to hide the seams. Right now, I hid the seams with spackle. And uh, when this thing is eventually painted, and I'll be using a, a, a sprayer to paint it, uh, you won't see the seams at all. They won't be there at all, period, end of story. Also, I want to bring up and, and warn you that uh, if you don't have flat walls, okay, uh, you're going to have trouble with this stuff because the seams are going to show. Um, and that's because when you butt two seams together, I don't know if this is going to show up here, but you butt two seams together on a flat wall, there's no problem. You know, they, they butt together. When you have a bent wall, the seams are going to open up like this. I'm exaggerating, but how can I say like this, you know, or something like that. I, I think you get it. Uh, I don't have anything to illustrate that. Anyway, if you don't have flat walls, you're going to have trouble. So I would suggest get yourself a, a long level or a long flat whatever you have. Go around and survey your walls where you're going to in, uh, install and make sure that they're flat. And I know from experience that walls are not always flat because I had one in my living room and you'll see the wainscoting I did in there, uh, by the way, uh, somewhere in the video. Anyway, I had one wall that had, uh, it was an interior wall and it had a 2x4 that was bowed out. 
and you know that came from the builder that way and and uh, instead of replacing the two by four they just sheetrocked right over the top of it and so I had this bow on the wall I had to deal with when I did the wainscoting in there so I don't want to let this uh, get uh, too rambling I don't want to ramble on and on but I'll show you how to install this stuff and like I said number one is that you have to lay it out and there, there are going to be some rules like um, I'm going to I'm going to teach you. You can follow this rule or not. But whenever you have like you're in between two windows or in between two walls, and you've you know these things are fixed in in width. Whenever you have uh, uh, full panels that you can install, that's great. Okay. In other words, you start in one corner and you end in the other corner, and you have full panels. And that's wonderful. If you if you don't have full panels, okay, with that'll fit in the given space, never leave half a panel on a wall and never wrap it around. Try to wrap it around an inside corner on a wall. It will look terrible. Okay, and those are the amateurish mistakes I'm talking about. So let's end this right now and then I'm gonna put some photos up and I'll point out the mistakes. Again, it's not to, you know, criticize these people or anything. They they all think it's a wonderful job that they did and, and uh but they just these are <coughs> errors that stuck out. When I saw them they just jumped out at me. So Okay, so welcome to my Lanai. I've got a piece standing on edge here, a piece of panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer the top edge with a small block plane here. And what that, the reason I'm doing that is because I, I want a little room here. So I, I intend to fill this in with spackle when it's up on the wall. I check my wall, it's pretty flat. So hopefully I'll be able to, when I butt a piece up against this, I'll be able to <coughs> spackle over the top of it sand it down and hopefully it won't be seen. If it is seen, um, plan B is uh, I've got some, see this long piece of lath here? Right here, lath, lath, whatever you want to call it. Um, I intend to use that, but let's try it this way first before we go discussing that. So, Pull it. Remember, this is MDF. So don't want to ruin the flatness of the edge. I just want to chamfer the leading edge of it. detail there, probably not, but trust me, it's got a chamfer on it. that'll do it. Uh, I've used this method before when butting edges together but it wholly depends on whether or not you have flat walls. If you have flat walls this might work. If it doesn't, uh, like I said, there's a method with the lath uh, where you can uh, mimic frames and cover the seams with lath. But I'm not going to do that. It's a lot of work. Um, extra work if we can just uh, get away with spackling the seams. Okay, 
Okay, so <clears throat> getting ready to hang this panel here. One thing you might want to do, first off, this panel has a top and a bottom. So make sure you get the top and the bottom right. The bottom's wider. Also, if you have textured walls like this is, okay, you might want to where the seam's going to go at the end of the panels. You might want to knock down. Uh, this with a uh, paint, you know, uh, what do I call that? Uh, I just lost a tool. I have no idea where it is. Anyway, oh, scraper. Yeah. Scraper. Knock it down. Make sure there's no big bumps on it. Remember, we're going to try to butt up the seams. So, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, also using uh, some panel uh, or construction adhesive and I'm going to uh, hopefully this stuff does what it says and grabs uh, on the wall but uh, we'll see. That's if I can get it out of the tube. Oh Jesus. Don't tell me. Don't tell me this stuff is hard. I'll get back to you. Sometimes you go to the store and they put the bad shit up front. And uh, this might be bad. I did puncture the seal inside. So let me go play with it and see if I can get anything out of it. This is going to be tricky. By the way, you don't want to get too close to the line here. I think this construction adhesive, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I don't think it's, uh, it's fresh. I got a line on the wall here and I'm going to line them up. I got a nail gun. Eighteen inch brads. See if we can do this. Getting the first piece up, it's always hard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a foot pedal. Manipulate this board in place. I don't want to get glue all over me. Okay, that's the first one. Okay. Filling here. The center. The center's got blue on it, so it should be okay. Alright. Alright, so now it's time to go look at my plan. We're gonna get one more panel in here. Not a full four foot, but there's gonna be a panel here and a panel there cut from one of these. When I say panel, by the way, I mean, you know, a uh, wainscot panel. It's going to be a piece cut from a 48-inch piece. It's going to fit in here. It's going to go up to the wall. 
and I'm pointing to what you can't see, but I got a line where the sill is here. There's a line here. There's going to be a <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what the hell do they call them? Well, whatever. The, there's a line here. So the panel's going to go behind this. This is still loose. I didn't cut it. I'm going to cut a quarter inch out of here, fit the panel behind here, and then I've got another jump out below here, but you can't see it. So anyway, I'm going to go follow my plan. Okay, so that you understand where I'm going with this. Whenever you're doing trim work, you always have to butt your uh, pieces up against something. That's why I just put this casing in. It wasn't there before. And what I'm going to do is uh, step back a little bit. Is like I said, I'm going to cut a piece out here. And it's going to be from the right hand side of a full four foot panel. Uh, I'm looking for my ruler. And it'll be a little messy around here now. Oh, here it is. So, I want the next piece of paneling to be 16 and 7 eighths. It's, it's going to butt up against this. It's going to go behind, behind the sill here. I'll have to notch this out for a quarter inch. It's still loose, by the way. I made this myself. And um, it will continue below. As you can see it. It will continue following this line below. Now what you don't see is that I, I have um, a jump out for this for this um, uh, window underneath. There's going to be an inch and a half um, box below the window just for architectural um, veneer just to make it look pretty but uh, that's the game plan so I just need one piece I'm going to have to cut it 16 and 7 eighths it'll fit behind here and hopefully uh, like I said hopefully when we butt it up against this thing It'll be smooth enough that I can uh, spackle it. I use vinyl spackle. Uh, spackle it and sand it down and you won't be able to see that seam. That's the game plan. Okay, so I got that piece cut. And uh, I chamfered the edge like I did before to, so that it's going to meet this. The one thing I can't forget is that I need to take a quarter inch off this sill here so that this slides behind. But for now, I can just pull it out a little bit to see if this thing fits. It should. Overconfident, right? Mm -hmm. How's that? Look pretty good. Once this is notched out, this will be able to push up against it. And this is what I'm talking about when I say you should always design so that, you know, your trim butts up into something. There are ways to return trim, and maybe I'll show you that somewhere in the video if I have to do it. But uh, ordinarily, you would want it to butt into something. That's a, you know, terminate it to something. And... Uh, this looks like it's nice and even, and I'll be able to fill that in with spackle, no problem. Which means I got a whole bunch of lath that I bought from Home Depot 
12 footers. I've got 10 of them I'll have to bring back, but we'll see how this job goes first. I checked only two walls and I verified that they're flat. But I got a dresser back there I can't move yet and I can't verify that wall. But the only way I would use the, the lap is if I got a bent wall. Uh, and it happens, because it happened when I was doing the wainscoting in the living room. There was actually a 2x4 inside an interior wall that was bent like a banana. And of course, they just, you know, sheetrocked right over the top of it. And so I had this big, bulging bump in the wall. And uh, it was a bitch trying to figure out how to, how to put a flat panel over that bulge. And what I ended up having to do was cut a whole big piece of sheetrock out behind the wainscot so that the wainscot could fit flat and uh, gave it enough room to, to sit within the wall. Anyway, okay, so uh, I'm going to pull this out now. I'm going to go over on the bandsaw and quickly cut that out. Come back, glue this up, and nail it in. Okay, so get ready to put this piece on. And uh, maybe some of you noticed, maybe you didn't. You probably didn't notice. But uh, I was using my bread nailer. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, my pin nailer instead of my bread nailer. I, this is all pinned on, and this is pin nailed on. I should have been using my 18 gauge bread nailer, which I have now. But. Uh, I mean, it went up okay. I think most of it was being held by the, by the glue. Pull this out a little bit. Yeah. Wiggle it in. Okay. Bottom in. i make sure that they're... I'm using my toes here to uh, push up on the panel. Make sure it's even Steven here. Looks good. And uh, let's see how to ah, I turn the air on. Time. Pressure. There it is. Took a little persuasion. Make sure. This is uh the stuff I'm going to be using. This is not the stuff I ordinarily use, but uh, I'm told that there's a shortage of, of uh, stuff everywhere as a result of the pandemic. So we'll see how this works out. Usually, ordinarily, I just use my finger for the first application. And uh, if you're worried about my floors, don't, because the carpet on the floor is as good as gone. I left it so that I could paint and do this um, and not have to worry about getting a lot of paint and stuff on the, on the slab uh, in case I want to tile. If I want to tile, then I got to clean all that stuff up. So we don't want to have to do that. Now I'm going to stop here for a minute. I got a credit card here. Yes, corporate, corporate American Express. In my old days, and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. 
going to require another coat, but it's going to cover it up nicely. So I got a little bit more done here, and uh, the jury is still out on the uh, spackle. Um, the first stuff I used doesn't have the same consistency as the stuff I used to use, and so I ran out and I bought another product. Uh, I still can't find the product I used to use, which is a, a DAP product, and so I'm trying it out, and we'll see uh, how it comes out. But in the meantime, you can see I uh, just installed that, I don't know what they call these things, jump out, whatever they are, but adds a little architectural interest to the wall. I got it propped up there and got a lot of glue in it. And, and um, in this wall, there's no studs that I can find. They're uh, what they call strapping. Uh, this is a block wall. We're in Florida here, so what's behind this wall is a uh, concrete block. And then they have some thin strapping that they attach the uh, sheetrock to. Uh, but since there's insulation in the wall, it's very hard to find that strapping. Anyway, uh, it's glued and uh, it's nailed um, and it's heavy. I should should have uh, did something else with this. I got lazy and I doubled up two pieces of MDF to get the depth I wanted, which was an uh, inch and a half, but um, it's pretty heavy. I'm committed to this now, but uh, and I got another one to put over there, but uh, a better way would have been obviously to uh, use one piece of MDF and um, a one by you know, one by on, you know, as a frame, make it hollow, in other words, instead of solid like I just did. But anyway, um, seems to be working out, and I think, I think the spackle I just used will, um, will do the job. We'll see, I'm waiting for it to dry, and then uh, I'm going to sand it down, and I'll probably give it another coat and sand it down again, and then I'll have to um, prime it to actually see if it, um, you know, if the seam is well hidden, if it uh, sticks out like a sore thumb, or what the deal is. Yeah, it was uh, six and an eight total um, space to center the panel. But the panel itself has uh, one and five eighths edge on one side of it, so I'm going to cut a piece of blank for blank MDF four and a half inches wide, and I'm going to do that from a piece of scrap. When you cut, or you need to cut blank panels, okay, or blank MDF. You can use scrap panel. You're going to have some scrap panels left over from uh, other areas. Now, I'm not going to use this, but you can turn the panel around and you can put that on the wall as a piece of blank. Now, I'm going to rip this four and a half inches wide and that will give me one side of my panel to center it on the wall.
Okay, so I cut the first piece and uh, the total I wanted the edge of the panel to the edge of the filler board I wanted it to be six and an eighth and it is and uh, what I'm using is the factory edge of the panel and now I got to cut the other edge out so that I get the same dimension six and an eighth going to take uh, another uh, filler piece okay so what I'm going to do uh, I decided to do is I'm going to cut this panel out equidistant on both sides and in that way I'll have uh, another filler panel to cut which is the same size four and a half inch and it'll be uh, exactly uh, centered within the wall Okay, so as I did before, what I'm going to do is uh, chamfer these edges, chamfer the edges, and then uh, before I put it up on the wall, I'm going to prime this, prime this side. But this is a good way, by the way, um, this is a good way to make sure that you're matching up properly to, to, the, uh, to the material by using these scraps because then you can be assured that the thickness is the same. If you go to the store and you buy a quarter inch MDF that's not from this manufacturer, uh, in other words uh, MDF that they didn't use in the manufacture of this stuff, there's going to be a minor difference and that minor difference may show up here at the edge and make it difficult for you to match up the edges so use the same material and you can't go wrong otherwise most people most homeowners don't have thickness planers I do but uh, uh, that's the only way that you could match them up you'd have to use a, um, a caliper to measure the thickness and then run it through uh, run one piece a thicker piece through a thickness planer but way beyond a homeowner's uh, ability, I understand that. If you're a woodworker, you probably have one of those uh, planers. All right, so um, I'm going to chamfer the edges. I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to—I I showed you before how to, how to chamfer the edges, and uh, then I'm just going to uh, prime them, wait for them to uh, to dry, and then take them in and uh, put them up on the wall. Uh, that wall, though, has an outlet so I'm gonna to have to measure up and cut a hole in this uh, for an outlet well there you have it that's what it looks like and um, here's another lesson I purposely chose this wall because this wall is uh, the back wall of the bedroom you went into the bedroom here through a door so this is the back wall and uh, when you're doing trim work <clears throat> or even paneling, look at this thing. I've got dirt on my lens and, and sometimes it focuses on the dirt. All right, I think it's focused now, I'm not sure. Alright, anyway. Anyway, uh, Another little tip here is that because this is a back wall and I purposely chose it to be uh, the, uh, the first wall I was going to do, I did that for a reason. And the reason is when you enter a room, your eyeballs uh, go to the corners of the room. And the first thing you'll see is a gap. Okay. Uh, if, if I didn't start on this wall, but I did and the next piece will cover will cover that gap so you won't see a gap so try to plan your try to plan your uh, wall so that that doesn't happen <clears throat> same thing on the other side always try to uh, plan them so that they overlap in a way that uh, won't be won't be visible when someone walks in a room.
Okay, so after all your hard work, measuring, and uh, planning, um, this happens. I had to adjust the panel to stay on my line on this wall because this corner, this corner is not straight. Probably because, <coughs> you know, obviously they mud these walls, <coughs> they use a corner bead, um, and just the mud on the walls is going to cause imperfections like that. Now in this case, you know, we're using flat panels here, so uh, ordinarily if I were actually doing wainscoting, I would scribe this board in, and if you want to know what that means, uh, go look it up. But uh, it means I would cut that angle into this first board. But um, in this particular case, that's about three sixteenths, maybe less, yeah, about three sixteenths of an inch gap at the top versus the bottom, and that keeps the board level, the panel level on this wall. All I'm going to do is fill it in with spackle. Your eyes will never see it and you'll never know the difference. But, however, stay on your lines. Okay, you want to make sure that your panels are going to follow your um, chalk lines and your or your laser lines, whatever you're using. Otherwise you're going to get into big trouble. Okay, you don't want a piece of panel going higher over here, and that's what would have happened if I were to follow that line. Um, if you look at this end here, I don't know if the camera's going to distort it or not, but it's perfectly straight in reference to the corner. Okay, so houses are uh, not straight. And these corners aren't straight either, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm not sure I recorded this yesterday, but um, got this one little area of the wall done. Not sure what yet what I'm going to do with this outside corner. Um, when I did wainscoting in my living room and my family room, I mitered the corners. Uh, but this stuff is pretty thin. It's only a quarter inch, so I'm not so sure I can pull it off. We'll see. So I'm going to leave that as is for now. I was working over here in this corner of the bedroom. And sooner or later I have to move this bed out of here and this furniture. But um, I got that piece in. There's two pieces. There's a filler piece on the other side, about the same size as the one here. And I haven't filled it in with spackle yet. But uh, if you've been paying attention, there's a reason why I left that piece out right here. And that's because, oh boy, I left my, uh, left my level on. Forgive me. Oof. I got it pointing right in my eye. Uh, anyway, so I, I just did this. I did this jump out. Let me let me get back from here a little bit. I got so much junk on the floor here now. I can hardly move around here. So that's what we're looking at right there. And so I just did this jump out. I had to move the outlet. Uh, that's not part of you know th this video. Is about Wayne the Wayne Scott panels. Uh, uh, I haven't done a video about the jump out, but. Uh, a little too advanced, I think, for this video. So let's just continue with the wainscot. And you can see I've got a couple of marks on the walls there. I set it up with my laser level here. So the next thing I'm going to do is fill that, fill that in with spackle. Let it dry, sand it down. And um, like I started saying, if you've been paying attention, there's a reason why this isn't in here yet and that's because I need to put the first panel in on this wall because once again when you 
look at this wall you would want this to butt into this piece otherwise you're going to see a seam there you're going to see a seam one way or another but you'll see a lesser seam if you uh, butt it you always try to uh, uh, how, how do I say this now as you're sighting down the wall when you walk into a room and you sight down the wall that's where your butt joint should be in other words this piece is going to butt against a piece that's not there yet it's going to butt into it and that's where your seam should be so uh, that's about it for now wow look at that gap in that wall that's because of the uh, unevenness of the uh, mudding that they do in the corners here but uh, this is the importance, I keep harping on this, I'm going to show it one last time. This is the importance of, uh, of overlapping the correct way. Now if you were standing in a room, the doors back behind us, that away, behind us, way back behind us. If you were standing in a room and you were looking in this direction, hopefully this was what you'll see. And I didn't prime this board yet, by the way. but. I just had it in there and now I can't get it back in there. This is what you'll see. Nice, clean, straight edge. You see how it covered that gap? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. But uh, the gap's gone. There's no gap here anymore. It's nice and clean. Even from this angle, it's clean. So I'm sighting down this wall. And that's because I would be looking from the doorway, sighting down this wall. And this piece will go in here and it's going to cover over the imperfection. And that's the last time I'm going to uh, harp on that as a tip. Morning. <clears throat> First new morning here. It's still dark outside. Six o'clock in the morning. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm trying to decide on a strategy and I think I have one to do this uh, outside corner. I mentioned once before the outside corners I did on the four reel uh, Wayne Scotting I did in my living room and family room. They were mitered. Uh, the corners were mitered, and I have to admit that uh, that was a bit of, uh, well, how would you say, uh, black magic to get uh, the corners to made up, the miters to look right. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I'm not going to go out there and show you them, but they are pretty much perfect. Uh, but I know I worked on it hard, so... Uh, fortunately, I didn't have a lot of outside corners to do either. Uh, that was with half inch MDF. This stuff is only a quarter inch. It would be pretty hard, um, I think, to miter them at a 45 degree angle and actually get them to mate up right on the wall. So what I'm going to do is butt them. And uh, in keeping with uh, what I said many times before, we have to be aware of how we're looking at these panels when we enter a room and so what I'm going to do is uh, well let me get a let me get a couple of pieces of wood here so that I can illustrate this better a couple of pieces of uh, panel uh, so I'm going to shut this down just for a second and I'll come back okay so I'm back and uh, so that I can move this panel out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this panel full length from here. Geez, I can't even see what I'm doing here. Gotta make sure you can see. From here uh, to here, I'm going to cut it. And that's going to leave me a little sliver of uh, fill here in the corner. 
So what I'm going to do way. I'm going to do the corner with a butt. I'm going to have two fill pieces here. Once again, I'm using scrap, you know, from from the uh, sheets. Okay, because they're the exact width of the material the manufacturer used, so I don't want to have to deal with different size pieces. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to butt them, and this would be wrong. Okay, what we want is. A fill here. These are not the actual pieces. These are just scrap. We want to fill it this way, okay, on this end, and then overlap with this end, okay, like that, so that you can't see the, you won't be able to see the seam like this. It would be like this. You won't be able to see uh, any gaps or seams, and. Um, what I'll do, and you can see that this is uneven by the way. You see it rocking here because of the the, the corner, you know how they, they mud and, and spackle uh, when they put the sheet rock up. So these corners are never square. They always have some kind of curve to them. So anyway, there's going to be a gap here because of that. Let me uh, move the camera around here. Again, I got junk in the way here. Oops. To hold all this in place. There's going to be, uh, well, there's going to be a gap for this stuff here anyway. But uh, that's what it's going to look like. And then I'll fill this in with spackle and I'll sand it all flat. And once it's painted, you won't see the corner. You won't see it at all. Uh, but just just make sure that if you do an outside corner, that you know you lap it properly. You don't want to lap it this way uh, because the worked corner will be uh, visible. It'll be the first thing you see when you walk in the room. So you want to lap it this way, and then we'll work on it with the spackle and sand it. And trust me, it'll it'll be invisible to the eye. Uh, so that's the strategy to do that outside corner. Uh, they may not all be. I got a couple of more outside corners. I got one here, one here, and one over there. And that's it, thankfully. That's all I can see. So. Um, this will be the first and I don't know what I'll use here because I don't know what size the panel will be. I may not need two pieces of scrap. I may actually have fit a full panel on there. I don't know yet. So anyway, that's the strategy for this corner and it, uh, it should work out okay. Me again. thought I was uh, done explaining this but uh, originally I was going to put this panel on, see I cut it. I cut it at its maximum length before, you know, it, it um, you know, uh, it, it hits the next pattern. So anyway, there's one pattern, this is the maximum width I can get out of it. And uh, what I originally was going to do was just put it up on the wall a little off center and I thought, well, nobody will see it anyway, but uh, I think they will. So what I got here is uh, centered right now, 7 8 strip on one end, 7 8 on this end, but this is the point, and this is why I tuned you back in here. This is not going to be 7 8 it's going to be 7 8 plus a quarter, remember? Because it's going to overhang so that it can butt into the next piece. And in fact, I'm going to make it... Um, uh, what would that be? That would be uh, seven eighths plus a quarter would be one and an eighth. 
I'm probably going to go past that by maybe a sixteenth of an inch, better a little long than short, and I can always sand the edge down to fit, okay? And so that's the game plan. Okay, so here I am. Uh, this is how far I've gotten. Got the panel up on the wall. Got the one piece over on the right, the seven eighths. And what I'm going to do now is because the wall's not straight, it's a half inch smaller at the bottom than it is at the top, or a half inch at the bottom and three quarter at the top. I'm going to scribe this piece, okay? And I'm going to put it on here like this. And then I'm going to use a pencil. And then I'm going to uh, scribe a line on it and I'm going to cut it. And I'm, I'm going to take it out of a solid piece here. This is where I'm going to cut it off this piece of scrap right here. Where there's no carvings, okay? And I'm not going to lie to you, this is going to be a hard cut on a table saw. Um, well, it's going to be a hard cut if you don't have a table saw, let's put it that way. Uh, but uh, I'm sure you'll get it done. These walls are never straight, by the way. Uh, let me shut this down. I can't do this uh, on camera. Well, maybe I can. You get the idea. This would be better if had two people. I gotta uh, tack that thing on the wall before I do anything, so I'm gonna shut it down. You get the idea. Morning. Uh, I thought I'd show an alternate method of, atta of attaching these uh, fillers, filler pieces, to the um, panel. Uh, all along, I've been chamfering the edges and then I've been nailing them up separately on the wall, but there's another way to do this. You can glue them together. Uh, anyone that's built large-scale radio-controlled airplanes out of balsa wood knows this method. Uh, I'll, I'll just demonstrate right now. What you need, of course, is a piece you want to glue and a panel you want to glue it to. Flip them over. Dustly. You need a flat table to do this, by the way. And with model airplaning, we use masking tape to do this, but I'm finding that masking tape uh, doesn't have the strength to hold on. You know, the MDF is a lot heavier than uh, uh, than balsa wood, and so they've been pulling off. Now, the downside to this method, of course, is that you have to wait for the glue to dry. The upside is that it makes a better scene, especially if you have textured walls. Okay, and we're going to take the whole bottom here. Thusly. What you're going to do is come over and hang, hang it over the table like that like a hinge. I'm going to put glue in this joint. Hopefully this isn't going to pull off. I'm noticing that uh, this is getting a little loose even with the uh, duct tape. So try to work fast to get this done. Don't let it overhang too long. Don't let it be quick with this. The idea is just to get the glue in here. It's going to squeeze out. And I forgot to bring a uh, moistened paper towel. Motion paper towel to wipe this excess off. I don't even have a paper towel at all. Let me 
I'm shut down. Let me run in and uh, okay. So I got my paper towel. Just gonna wipe it off. Not wet, by the way. Just damp. You don't want to weaken the glue. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have some heavy weights. What you want to do is weight this seam down so that both pieces are flat. Use whatever you have. It's a gallon of water, uh, old battery, another one of those heavy weights. You can feel with your, your fingers whether or not they're they're even. A bottle of something, herbicide. And uh, of course, like I said, the downside now is you got to wait about an hour for that to, to dry. But it does make a better joint with less fuss when it's up on the wall. Um, and of course, I got another piece of glue on here, so it would take two hours. This is uh, the next to last piece that I have. And I'm busy right now multitasking. I'm busy right now in a the room there filling, uh, you know, uh, joints in with spackle and sanding and that kind of thing. So I can wait an hour and I can wait uh, uh, another hour. I have other things to do. So you should plan your work accordingly. Well, this is where I am so far. And, uh, I'm happy with the way it looks thus far. One or two panels need a little touch up. But um, uh, latex, even when sprayed, goes on. Well, it sprays directly out of the can if you have a paint sprayer. But uh, the saving grace is that um, it's thick. And it goes on heavy and it covers over any imperfections in the spackle. So any that are left, that you know that you can, you can see through the uh, primer, uh, they'll disappear. <coughs> they'll disappear once uh, once it's painted with latex, white latex. But um, all the panels are up. Everything's up. And to the little hallway here to the bathroom there. Everything's up. I still have some uh, little trim work to do around the windows. There's a band banding that goes on below the window sill. And uh, I had a special order some uh, crown molding for the tops of the windows. Um, better, better I show you what I'm talking about my family room here and uh, if you look at the top of the window there you'll see some crown molding and uh, long ago when I did all of this I could uh, buy that at Lowe's now I noticed that Lowe's that who used to have a lot of uh, uh, foam uh, and that's what that is by the way that's a piece of uh, foam crown molding they used to have a lot of that stuff in stock in the store. They no longer have it in stock in the store. I was shocked by that. So, and the normal house stuff that you would use for crown molding is too big for a window. So anyway, I had a special order and from all places, uh, I ordered it from Wayfair because they have a good selection of crown molding. Who knew? You know, Wayfair uh, is a, uh, is a furniture provider online. You know, they ship cheap Chinese furniture and stuff, but uh, they had uh, crown molding. So um, quite a bit of it. It's kind of hard to choose this stuff when you're online because of the dimensions, but uh, I measured the dimensions of what's on the uh, windows out there and, and approximated it. So I had a order a couple of eight footers from them it's cost about 40 bucks free shipping all right anyway so that's where we are now morning so um, 
I realize that most of you are going to use the uh, MDF um, chair rail and baseboard that comes as a kit along with this paneling, but uh, I went my own way. Um, some of this will apply to you if you're using the kit and some of it won't, but I made I bought chair rail, MDF chair rail. I made a three-piece uh, assembly here uh, because um, it didn't look right as one piece. But anyway, uh, the chair rail that I bought, I couldn't find any chair rail thick enough to um, what do they call it? A rabbit, I guess you. You have to wrap it the back out by a quarter of an inch to fit over the edge of the panel of the sheet here. So, and I didn't like the eight foot lengths that came in the uh, kits. I also am not going to use three inch baseboard. That's what comes in the kit, and I would have to throw the baseboard out. So, I would end up spending fourteen dollars every eight foot section of chair rail that was unacceptable to me so I bought the chair rail at Home Depot by the foot it's MDF I cut it to size I'll show you how to make this three-piece chair rail if if you're interested uh, but um, main thing is the uh, the minor miters and these are difficult and these little corners here very difficult this will be easily filled in with spackle but I'm going to give you some tips on uh, making trim work and making it a little easier on you. Um, number one tip is that you always start with the longest walls first because if you screw up a really long piece, a really long piece uh, doesn't have to be thrown away. It, um, it can be cut up into smaller pieces for smaller sections of the wall if you're following me. So like this, you know, is a you know a short piece. There's a short piece here and a short piece there. There's short pieces everywhere. This is my longest wall right here. And this is the piece I'm going to start with. This was just an experiment, by the way, just to see what it would look like. And uh, I like the look, and so I'm going to go ahead with it. So this is my longest wall, and I'm outside right now, and I am fabricating. Uh, that piece of trim and I'll show you how to do it but this is more um, about cutting miters now this three piece chair rail that I made cannot be coped for those of you that know what a cope joint is it cannot be coped because it's got a little lip that, that um, uh, branches out so uh, no coping so they have to be miters and so what I'm going to do is uh, measure off this wall which I think is 166 and 9 sixteenths just a little over 166 and a half inch and I'm going to try and fit it but um, I'm also going to uh, I'm going to cut some sacrificial pieces to find these corners, to find the angle in these corners because they're not going to be 45 degrees and uh, I think of all the miters and all the trim work I've done I don't, I don't think I've ever found more than oh, two or three corners that were actually close enough to 45 degrees to cut 45 degrees on a miter saw so they're always I don't know, you know, 44, 44 and a half, or 45 and a half, 45 and three quarter, whatever it might be. Um, uh, they're never, in my experience, ever, you know, 45 degrees. So let's get on with this. Okay, so to make the chair rail, I started out obviously with the chair rail, piece of chair rail, and. Uh, 
there's going to be a cap. This one's not. Uh, let's see if I got one here. I don't. Not like a little piece here. I started out with a cap. I ripped this cap. I call it a cap because it sits on top of the uh, paneling. And I, I ripped this from uh, lath, which comes in 12 foot sections on a table saw. And I rounded it off like this with a uh, uh, hand router, a, a trim router, and a round over bit. And this is what it would look like, except this edge is too thin uh, to give this thing any stability. Plus, I really don't like this bottom edge. I want it, I want it somewhere around there. That's, and so I made two templates to cut the chair rail and to cut the uh, trim down. And they're out of the table saw, so we'll move out there and have a look. Okay, so we're out at the table saw. And you can see the difference. I cut this bottom off here. And I made sure that I made one piece of template so that I could always set the table saw up to the same width to cut the uh, chair rail. And ditto that for the uh, for the cap. So now I got a flat here, the quarter inch flat, about a quarter inch. That'll sit right on top of this cap. And then there's another piece that goes on to here that that. Um, on the bottom of this uh, that nails flat onto the sheet so that's not part of this assembly so this is actually two pieces that make up the chair rail and uh, easy enough to understand I put the template in here I set the saw and that's that okay and ditto that for this uh, I've got one gluing up here right now just to make life difficult, the forgive me for moving around, clean up here a little bit. The chair rail comes in 16 foot lengths, but the lath comes in 12 foot lengths. So I don't know if you can see it all the way down there or not, but uh, the lath is short of the. Uh, of the uh, length of this piece, so I'll have to add another piece. I'm just waiting for this to dry. It's flush with the bottom. I glued it up and I pin nailed it. I have a pin nailer on, on the floor here. Pin nailer. And I used some carpenter's glue and I just glued the, uh, the cap onto the bottom there. Thusly. It's easy enough to understand. Now once again, I get one shot at, at this because this is the longest wall. So if I make it too short, I screw up a miter, whatever the case may be, uh, I won't use this piece. I'll make this piece into smaller pieces for other, you know, parts of the walls, and I'll re, you know, re uh, uh, fabricate uh, a new uh, piece that's 166 and whatever it was. 9 sixteenths long and try it again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get two pieces of scrap wood and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to cut miters and I'm going to do it empirically because I found that's the best way to do it. I'm going to uh, be walking back and forth to my miter saw until I get the right angles set up on the saw to make a right uh, you know, a right hand miter on this chair rail and a left hand miter on the chair rail that'll fit the corners. And then I'll know what the angles are for the walls I haven't covered yet. Uh, the one uh, which I call the lanai wall and a, another little short wall that attaches to the right hand, to the left hand side of this chair rail. Enough, enough yakking away here. Let's go do some work. Just a, uh, a note on reading these angles on walls. I got my fancy Bosch 
angle finder here and uh, we're going to see what it says that this wall is here. It says that it is 86.9 degrees but I know that's wrong and I know if I cut miters at 86.9 or even 87 it's not going to they're not going to mate up and I'll tell you why. You see this curve in the wall here this is of the uh, spackle. This angle is what we want to measure, not the larger angle. The larger, you see the gap here? There's a gap there. This is a mistake a lot of people make. What we need to do is just measure the angle in the corner. And what, I'm, what I got here is a little different kind of angle. Uh, you can buy these at Home Depot or Lowe's and uh, I'm going to reduce its size a little bit so I can measure the small angle and I want just this angle here in the corner okay I transfer the angle to this tighten this up a little bit make sure I got pushed in the corner see the gap the gap is almost gone there actually if I wanted a more accurate measurement I'd have to put a block of wood in here. Let me see if I've got something to fill that space. Yeah, I've got this. Get it away from the wall a little bit so we can get a better better idea. Now this one also has a little a little bit of a curve here. But okay. That's what I'm calling the angle. And I'm going to measure that on my fancy, fancy pants uh, angle finder here on the Bosch. Just transferring the angle to this so I can read it. I don't know if you can get this in camera or not, but uh, pretty much going to move the arms so that, so that they match up right there and it says it's 85.5 degrees of course that's uh, divided by two you know when you set the saw up but yeah I, it's even different than uh, last time I took it by one degree I always by the way cut these angles to check before I cut any of the trim. I just use a piece of wood, lath, whatever I've got to pieces of scrap, sacrificial scrap wood and I cut cut the corner to set the saw up so that I know that when I cut my trim it's going to be the right angle. It's going to mate up. Might have to make minor adjustments on the saw but that's what I do. I do it empirically so that uh, I get uh, a pretty good miter. Um, uh, that's about it. I was going to show you a few miters that I did in, in the living room when I did the wainscoting, but I don't know if it's worth it. Here's an outside corner. There's no spackle in that. That's that's right up to the. This is also mitered. I don't know what else I got here, but and I don't always get them right the first time, so here's one. There's another. This one's got a little crack in it. So anyway, uh if you're careful about it you can get the right angles if you understand what you're measuring. Okay, so I cut a couple of pieces. I cut this from a uh, scrap uh, panel here. And the wider you make this, by the way, the better the indication uh, of any uh, deviation in the uh, wall angle. So, 
I chose this one uh, first because it's very close to 90 degrees. 89.5 is what I measured. I just cho chose uh, 45 degree on the saw and uh, it's perfect. So we're not going to have any problem with this wall here whatsoever. Now I know that this wall is not 90 degrees on the left side here. <clears throat> I'll just quickly check it but I, I know it's not. It's open in the, in the center if you can see it. It's pretty close though, 89.2. Probably could get away with this at 45, but there is going to be a little bit of a gap here. I'll try it at, uh, well, it's already at 90. I think it looks okay, <clears throat> which is surprising. Usually, usually you have to do battle with this stuff to get it to fit in the corners, but uh, that corner and that corner seem to be okay, so I lucked out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the first piece. <clears throat> we'll see if we can't make it fit. Okay, that's the first test piece, and uh, a little bit of crack will disappear once you tap this with a, uh, a rubber mallet or a hammer. It'll it'll close it right up. That's perfect. Let's see what the other one looks like. And I'm gonna focus this thing every once in a while focuses in on the dirty lens. There it is. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Now these were easy because they were 45. They were damn close to 45. I've got others marked around the wall where they're not. The one behind me is uh, around 88 and uh, there's a couple that, that aren't 90 so it's not going to be easy just keep in mind your walls are not going to be you know they're not going to be square it's pretty rare when they are all right so uh, I gotta go fabricate another piece from behind my back here and I forget what the length of this is hello so, I'm uh, getting pretty near uh, the end of this. Uh, as you can see, I did a little painting today. And as you can't see, and I'm going to make note of it, uh, you can't see a single seam in this room where the panels come together. Can't see a single one. Um, I get a little bit more light in here. There you go. And so, looking pretty good. All the dust is settled in here. I did use a sprayer. It's my old Wagner. And um, did a lot of masking. Uh, as you can see, I tried to keep, you know, I tried to spray right on the line of the of the uh, trim, but uh, yeah, for some for some reason it uh, just wouldn't spray a straight line. So maybe one of you guys can tell me in the comment section uh, what I was doing wrong. I mean, I got paint all over the walls. Look at that. Anyway, so. I think I've gone as far as I can. I'm, there might be one, one more video after this one.